Well, today we're going to talk about some of the common misconceptions surrounding Final Fantasy XIV. Big criticisms that get thrown around a lot. Some of them are very subjective. Some are lies. Some are half-truths, like how we only play for the plot. The first one I hear a lot is combat is slow. Now, if you're brand new to MMOs, you might not know what people mean when they say that. So let me explain. The global cooldown, or GCD, is how long you usually have to wait between casting a spell and casting it again. I could show you in-game footage to demonstrate this, but that would be boring. So I'm going to use ice cream instead. It's also really hot here. Now you might be wondering, why would I have a GCD in real life? on ice cream licks, and I'll tell you, so I don't get brain freeze. See, it actually makes total sense. The GCD in 14 is two and a half seconds, so that means... <laughs> lick, two and a half seconds, and lick. Now that can seem like a lot compared to WoW's one or one and a half second GCD. That's wow. So it's faster, right? At low levels, that can definitely feel slow because you don't have your complete toolkit, which can include ways to speed up your GCD or like the rate of licks or off global cooldown abilities. My off global cooldown ability is eating a cashew. Let's say I have two and I need to get these two in between like during that GCD downtime. Oh, barely had time to do that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I mean. Double weaving nuts between licks. The point is that context is important. And at low levels, you lack the context of how your job really plays normally, much less optimally, like an end game where you might have positionals to keep track of, buffs to manage, dots to manage, making sure you get your combo out within the party buff window, adapting your rotation to the different fight mechanics and managing a metric ass ton of off global cooldown abilities. Yes, the global cooldown will never be as low as WoW's, but what I found is that it doesn't matter because the jobs have a very pleasant flow to them that complements the encounter design. You don't feel like you don't have things to do. It's it's really much the opposite, especially when you're learning a fight in end game, like you won't even feel like you have time to fart. Judging the pace of combat by the low level experience is like judging the Star Wars franchise by the last jedi actually if you go to google uh, and you type in is ffxiv a uh one of the things that comes up is a wow clone is ffxiv a wow clone it's like well is wow an everquest clone is a gordon ramsay chicken tender a mcnugget clone of course not because they're in the same genre which is chicken tender like is gouda a clone of parmesan is manchester united a clone of liverpool no no, the short answer is no, and the long answer is no. Next, this is what I hear way more often. <laughs> it's for weebs. Okay, but saying Final Fantasy XIV is for weebs is like saying WoW is for neckbeards. And look, I played WoW for a long time. Do I look like a neckbeard to you? <laughs> <laughs> Don't answer that. Also, just because something was made in Japan doesn't mean liking it makes you a weep. <laughs> okay, like, have you ever had ramen? Have you enjoyed karaoke? Have you used a digital camera? Then you're a weep if you think 14 is weep. And look, I get it. Because when I first played, um, I kind of had that thought too, because I didn't understand. I was like, who are these cat girls in these skimpy outfits? Who is this fetish game for? And then I made a cat girl. Turns out it was me. <laughs> I was the weep. The weep was right here the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is it too late to start playing? I have people ask me this all the time. Like, there's always part of me that wants to be like, yep, <laughs> it's too late. You missed the bus and we are no longer accepting applications to play. <laughs> But that's not true at all. Is it this exclusive VIP club that's only for OGs? Like, of course not. I, I joined I joined in the middle of Heaven's Ward. And um, I was in no hurry to level at all. I was really taking my sweet, sweet time getting up to max level and enjoying the story, enjoying the journey. And when I got to max level, I had no problem uh, gearing up quickly and going straight into a static and uh, 
starting to do some of the savage content. Like I, it was pretty seamless for me. Yes. Yeah, you totally can. You can join any time. It doesn't have to be at the start of an expansion. It doesn't have to be in the middle of an expansion. Just hop on in. The water's fine. Now, I know that a reason that some people may feel like it's too late to start is because it can take a while to get through all that story. And um, I understand that, but th that's something that's very subjective and can vary from person to person. It depends on how much time you have to play. It depends on the pace at which you play. Like, I know someone that got through A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Word in two weeks with cutscenes. I know someone else who got from A Realm Reborn to Stormblood in three weeks. Uh, and someone who took a month just for A Realm Reborn. It's, it really depends on you. And yeah, there are story skip potions. There are jump potions that you can buy on the Mog Station. I try to discourage people from doing that because the story is part of the journey. And you should at least try, uh, try it. But um, if you do, if you just cannot help yourself from buying one of these skip potions, remember that New Game Plus is coming out pretty soon. So um, you'll be able to play through story content on your main character, uh, like story content you may have skipped. So there's a silver lining there. Think of it more like, um, like a Netflix series, right? Just because Stranger Things had two seasons already doesn't mean you can't start watching it now, right? <laughs> like you, when season three comes out, you can start watching season three. You can catch up on season one and two. Like it's the same. It's not different than that. And finally, I want to talk about one that might not be as big of a misconception today as it was a couple of years ago, but because it was such a major <laughs> misconception for so long and one that I actually had, I feel like it's worth mentioning. Um, and that is the question, wait a minute, isn't Final Fantasy XIV a failed game? And the truth is, I heard about Final Fantasy XIV uh, with a 1.0 launch being a disaster. And when I heard that, it just went completely off my radar. I was like, okay, that's too bad. Sounds like Final Fantasy XIV sucks. I will never play it. I remember thinking that. So I wonder how many people, uh, even today, might still have that wrong assumption. I I I'm sure less since more time has passed and the marketing for Shadowbringers has been so good. If you want to know a lot about it, I would recommend watching the No Clip documentary about the transformation, the revival, the resurrection that Final Fantasy XIV experienced uh, because of Yoshida, because of Naoki Yoshida. Uh, I will put a link to that documentary in the description box below. It's nothing short of a miracle that of what happened. Basically, Yoshida took over. They completely changed everything. But you have to give credit to Square Enix for realizing that slapping the for Final Fantasy name on something isn't enough like you need to also provide quality content to people and they were not so proud that they couldn't admit that they made a mistake they were humble enough to realize that they needed to make big big changes and they did final fantasy 14 has turned into an absolute juggernaut of the industry and uh i'm just i'm so happy to see where it goes from here i wanted to address this misconception even though it is a little outdated um uh, because who knows who, who knows it was still out there still thinking wait a minute don't i remember that game being a catastrophic disaster it was it was not even playable but it is heckin' playable today. So that's really all I have to say here today. Did you have any misconceptions about Final Fantasy XIV? Do you know anyone else that is still um, laboring under some false assumptions? If so, let me know in the comments section down below. I really do try to read every comment and respond to as many as I can. Uh, so you can let me know there. You can also get in touch with me on the Discord server where I'm I am at quite often. So anyway, I will speak to y'all again soon. Thanks for watching and take care. Bye-bye.